Hello guys, welcome back. In the last video, we had been discussing about decision statements in C. And in this video, we will discuss about iterative statements in C. That means loops in C, basically. So, uh, the two topics that we will discuss are types of loop and loop termination. Now, first of all, let us take a look at types of loop. So C essentially supports basically three types of loops. That is the for loop, while loop and do while loop. The functionality of all the three loops is more or less the same. They perform the same task, but just there are a few tweaks here or there. So first of all, let's discuss about for loop. So for loop as it is already written over here, for loop is an entry controlled loop. What that means is, for any loop, there are actually three elements, the initialization, the condition checking, and the increment, increment or decrement, basically the loop counter. So in case of for loop, in entry control, so this means that the loop is, con I mean, uh, the condition checking of the loop is done as soon, I mean, at the beginning of the loop, that means as soon as the loop starts. Uh, for example, say you want to iterate over a uh, or, or say you want to print 10 numbers so in order to do that we will run a loop starting from 0 or 1 until 10 so the condition checking of the counter will be done right at the beginning of the loop and the condition checking will be such that it will check whether my counter value is less than or equal to 10 if it is less than 10 then obviously the loop will continue else it will terminate so that is the condition which needs to be checked in the loop now if there is no condition checking the loop will become an infinite loop the loop will never stop okay so the next type of loop is while loop this is also entry control loop there's just a basic difference that we will see over here uh, when we code you'll get that and the third type of loop is the do while loop which is an exit control loop so exit control loop means the condition checking is done right at the end so the advantage or or the difference actually the difference between an entry control loop and an exit control loop is that a entry control loop will run if and only if the condition is sat satisfied that means if the condition fails for the first time the loop will not get executed even once but in case of a do while loop or an exit control loop whatever the condition may be the loop will run at least once that is even if the condition statement is false the loop will obviously run once because the condition checking is done right at the end of the loop now we have loop termination so loops are of two types obviously finite loops and infinite loops so finite loops are those obviously which terminate after a certain amount of time or after executing for a certain amount of time and infinite loops are those which never end okay so that is more or less what we will be discussing in this video so let us get started with the code so first of all i'll illustrate to you the for loop so hash include stdio.h which is our kind of a regular formality that we have to perform and we write return zero now for any loop we need a counter so let us say our counter is int i and say suppose we want to print numbers from 1 to 10 so first of all we will write i is equal to 0 i less than 10 i plus plus i am giving us a very simple example right now we will see some complex ones later on so printf percentage d comma i so you see what we have done is this is a basic for loop which has been designed so as to print 10 numbers starting from 0 and ending at 9 okay so what i've done is i've written this for which is obviously a keyword over here for okay for is a keyword then i have this i is equal to 0 which is the initialization part of the loop as i've already told you every loop has three parts the first one is initialization second part is condition check and the last one is increment 
increment or decrement so these are the three parts three essential parts of any loop obviously you can skip this one as well as this one but then if we want to design a normal loop then these are the three important parts so i is equal to 0 does the initialization i less than 10 does the condition checking and i plus plus does the increment or decrement obviously i am incrementing i why because i am starting the value of i from 0 and i want to continue till 10 so in that case obviously i have to increment the counter if i decrement it then the loop will run in a reverse direction which would obviously lead to an infinite loop and we don't want to do that now what i've done is see inside this for loop i have written a printf statement over here what you need to notice that as because i have only one printf or only one statement after this for i can ignore putting the brace but if you have multiple statements then just like if statements over here also you have to put this brace okay so okay let's let's uh, leave the brace as it is so this is the syntax for a for loop so let us save our code and then we shall see whether it runs perfectly or not so uh, let's say the name of the file is maybe uh, for loops one and it is my c file so loops one dot c save so uh, if we expect the output okay let's say I put a slash n over here so that the code is readable okay or uh, maybe slash t now if we compile if the if there are no mistakes in the code then obviously we will see on a single line value starting from 0 to 9 let the code get compiled okay so over here as we can see the first value is 0 one, then is 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on until 9 so that is what we expected now what I said was we can skip this condition if we do that what happens is the loop will run probably infinitely see this has turned out to be an infinite loop okay so that is the process how you make an infinite loop control v oops control z Next, let us take a look at the syntax for while loop. Uh, so, let's say we make a new file for that. I'll write while i is less than 10 printf percentage d slash t comma i. So, this will also do the same thing. Now, what you need to note is that the syntax is a little different over here what we had is we had all uh, initialization condition check and increment everything was at one place but in case of a while loop we don't have that in case of a while loop you need to first initialize it outside you need to place the condition check over here and you need to place the counter obviously and that is inside the while loop let's say this is loops to dot c so for this file uh, or uh, for this while loop also we have three essential parts that is initialization condition check and increment or decrement so over here this code will also print the values from 0 to 9 let us run this or let us compile this first and run it now uh, the entry control and exit control thing see even the for loop the condition checking was right at the beginning okay that's the output for the while loop see we got the same thing as the output same like the for loop now what i was saying was in case of a for loop we had the condition check right at the beginning in case of while loop also we have the condition check right at the beginning but next loop that we will see that is the for uh, do while loop in that loop you will see that the condition check is right in the end unlike for and while so uh, let us copy the same code over here also you need to specify the initialization first 
and the syntax is like this while i is less than 10 okay so let us save it as loops 3 dot c and build it and yes one more thing that you would like to notice is that i have okay uh, i have placed this semicolon over here if you don't place the semicolon in case of a do while loop then that would show as an error why that happens is because see in case of a while loop we had this while statement or the statement containing the while thing then we opened a brace and over here we closed it so obviously if i terminate this one with a semicolon it means that i have terminated this part of my code over here itself so it will essentially never get inside this pair of braces okay so this code will remain unexecuted why because this was supposed to be a part of the while loop but as because i have terminated the loop over here by providing a semicolon it will never ever enter into the code or into that block and same goes with the for loop over here also we don't place a semicolon but in case of a do while loop we have to place a semicolon over here why because this this thing is the last thing in this line so if you do not place a semicolon the program does not know or the compiler does not know that it has to terminate execution here okay so obviously the output you can see it is matching now say suppose i initialize i with 10 okay and over here i have the condition as i less than 10 so obviously this is not true because the value of i is 10 which is not obviously less than 10 it is rather equal to 10 but even with this condition you will see that my loop would work at least two once see and the reason why that happens you will understand see i have got a 10 over here now if i do the same thing with while loop you will see that it will not work see we did not get anything in the output and same goes with the for loop now why that happened was in case of while loop the condition checking has been done right at the beginning but in case of do while loop the condition checking has been done after this set of statements has got executed okay so that is the basic difference between an exit control loop that is a do while loop and entry control loop that is while and for loops so that was the basics of loops now one more thing that is uh, that has to be explained is see over here you might get confused that i is equal to 0 i is less than 10 and i plus plus so essentially but just by seeing it once you would think that every time this piece of code is executed the control again goes or control again shifts over here so i must get again initialized with zero but that actually does not happen why it is so the reason is that this initialization part is always done only once even though it is written over here but that initialization will be performed only for the first time when the compiler enters or when the compiler encounters this for and for the subsequent times this will be not considered but yes this condition checking and the increment or decrement whatever it is that has to be done every time now what is the order so the order is that first initialization will be done then the condition checking will be done after that whatever you have written inside this for block that part will be executed that means body of the loop is executed and after the execution of this body the counter is incremented it is not that the counter is incremented right after execution why because see when i run the code what you would notice is that the first value that was printed was a zero see the first value that is printed over here is a zero it is not actually one now if the counter were incremented before this part is executed what would happen is the first value that we would get would have been one unlike in this case we have got a zero over here so that shows that first the block of four is executed and once this execution is done the counter is incremented so the loop goes something like this first initialization then condition check then the body is executed 
then comes the increment or decrement again condition check body is executed increment decrement condition check and so on and so forth so that was the basics of loops now using this loop say suppose we want to print uh, maybe uh, say using any loop we want to print the multiplication state or multiplication tables okay so let's write hash include std io dot h okay I'm, i can actually just copy this entire thing Uh, say we want to print the multiplication table of five uh, and let's use okay let us use a simpler loop that is while loop we can get rid of all this thing so int i is or int num is equal to five comma i is equal to zero now while i is less than okay let's say i is one well i is less than equal when i is okay print f uh, let's say num okay percentage d so we have num comma space multiplied by percentage d okay so we have 5 multiplied by whatever the value of i is is equal to percentage d comma num into i so that is what we have to print now once this printing is done let's say we want to give a new line say table t a b l e let's it be a c file save it okay probably the code is fine so if it does not show up any error then the code must print the multiplication table of 5 and that is actually so so see what happened 5 into 1 is equal to 5 5 into 2 is 10 15 20 25 and so on until 5 tens are 50 so what happened over here is see I have given num is equal to 5 and i is equal to 1 so the loop the initialization of loop has been set to 1 so the loop will begin with 1 and for the first time okay see what we have is for the first time this is the value of i that means when the entry to this loop is made obviously the condition is true because i is obviously less than equal to 10 so no problems with this when the sh control shifts inside this printf statement we have percentage d that is num it's 5 into i so this percentage d corresponds to i value of which is initially 1 so that is why the 1 has got printed over here and then we have num into i that is 5 into 1 so 5 into 1s are obviously 5 so that that has got printed now after this this thing is printed the value of i is incremented by 1 i plus plus means i plus plus is basically i is equal to i plus 1 i plus plus is equivalent to equivalent to i is equal to i plus 1 okay so the increment has been done once this increment is done the control again shifts to the beginning the condition checking is done that means 2 is obviously less than equal to 10 so the control again shifts over here and we get 5 into 2 is equal to 10 so that is what actually gets carried on until the value of i becomes 10 so when the value of i is 10 again you see this condition gets satisfied because 10 is obviously less than or equal to so the second part that is equal to clause gets satisfied so 10 is equal to 10 this printf will be executed i is in, again incremented to 11 now when the condition checking will be done 11 is less than equal to 10 obviously that is false so the body of this while is not executed so it will be skipped and then the control shifts to return 0 and hence the program ends so that was a multiplication table okay now
few programs that I would suggest you to try is number one try out factorial so in case of factorial what happens is suppose you want to calculate factorial of 5 so that would mean 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 okay make sure you do not place an into 0 over here because if you place an into 0 the entire factorial would turn out to be 0 so the logic I shall give you the logic is that first you have to maintain a one variable first you have to maintain one variable where you would store the result say the variable is fact and you have to initialize this, initialize this variable with something say one now what you will do is you will start a loop and you take an input from the user okay say the user gives an input to cal calculate the factorial of 5 so the loop will run 5 times now it is up to you whether you would start it from 5 and end at 1 or whether you start at 1 and at 5 it's basically the same thing the answer is going to be the same okay so what you will do is your assignment statement would be like fact is equal to fact into i so this would be your assignment statement now if you start off then make sure you either start with 1 or you start with 5 if you start with 1 you have to increment the loop until the value of that number is reached and if you start with 5 then you have to obviously decrement the loop until 1 is reached but make sure that you do not go until 0 because that would again change the entire answer to be 0 which is meaningless okay so that is the logic for factorial of a program another program that I would suggest you to try is the Fibonacci series now what happens in a Fibonacci series is it is actually a series in which okay let me see Fibonacci okay 0 then we have 1 then 1 2 3 and 5 8 um, 13 then we have 21 and and so on and so forth maybe 34 so actually this series would keep on going so the next number if you can guess what should be the next number well the next number would be 34 plus 21 which is 55 55 so what's the logic the logic is that the first number is always 0 second number is always 1 but thereafter this 1 is equal to the sum of the previous two numbers that means 1 is equal to 0 plus 1 this 2 is equal to 1 plus 1 this 3 is equal to 1 plus 2 5 is equal to 2 plus 3 8 is equal to 3 plus 5 13 is equal to 5 plus 8 21 is equal to 8 plus 13 and so on so one number is the sum of previous two numbers so this also you have to implement using a f any kind of loop it can be using for while or do while loop but the first two numbers you have to print using hard coding technique that means you have to print 0 or 1 over here okay so and after that you have to increment your loop and the value to be printed would be the sum of previous two values so try this program yourself and that would actually give you a very good revision of the loops concept okay so that is uh, probably all for this video thank you actually yeah one more program that you can try out is to take a number as input from the user take a number as input from user and print the tables until that number that means suppose the user enters say num is equal to 10 then what your program will do is your program will print the tables of all the numbers until 10 that means you have to print the table of 2 3 4 5 until 10 so this would be your program in this case you have to use the concept of nested loops this is a concept which I did not uh, discuss actually I forgot it see what happens is just like in if if else you have nested if nested else and so on in case of loops also you can have nested loops 
for example you can obviously write this say for i is equal to 0 i less than 10 i plus plus inside this loop you can always write say j is equal to 0 j less than say 10 j plus plus and then maybe there should be a printf uh, say percentage d comma uh, maybe i plus j okay i plus j okay let's write a slash t here and printf a slash n over here now see over here what i have done okay let's declare variable j over here what i have done is see there is one outer for loop and inside this loop there is one more loop that is this one and inside the body of this loop we have a single printf statement that's the reason why i did not include the braces but if you want you can always have braces at the end okay now so this printf statement basically corresponds to this for loop and this one this statement this printf statement corresponds to this for loop okay so basically we have a nesting of loops this nesting can be done until any level and but we generally use a two level nesting because that that level of nesting that three level four level and so on that is not really very useful but this two level nesting is very useful in case of arrays when we will study multi-dimensional arrays or two-dimensional arrays to be specific will be using a nested loop so this concept is going to be very useful later on and even when you practice further programs you would realize that this is very important concept okay now one more kind of programs that i would suggest you to do is pattern printing programs for example print the following pattern say pattern is um, Say suppose you have a star over here, okay? Then maybe you have, say, a star. Basically, the idea is to print a triangle of stars or asterisks. So you have a star here. So there must be a pattern, basically. Uh, what do we have? Okay. So there will be one star here as well then a space star 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 so see this is obviously a pattern in the first line you have one star second line you have two stars third line three stars four line four stars and here are one space two space three space so this is a logic this is actually this pattern printing can be a very good very good tool for you to understand how to code using loops how to use loops to perfection so pattern printing is going to be a very important practice okay so you need to print such patterns several other patterns could be like uh, say one one two one two three one two three four and so on one two three four five these kind of patterns also you can print these patterns seriously will be a very good practice for you to understand the concept of loops in details so practice these and you would see that loops will be in a very good grip of yours okay so that is all for this video thank you